hi <laughs> and um, yeah you might have noticed something different um, I am in a completely different place this time uh, but then again you know uh, I, I probably have uploaded or I don't know we'll probably upload I don't I'm not sure how the timeline would be like for the uploads but but yeah I I also am at the time of recording sort of making a you know um, vloggy kind of um, uh, video for uh, my trip to Batu Pahat which is actually a town in the state of Johor in Malaysia and uh, it is actually like two hours away from uh, the city Johor Bahru where I am currently living in right now so I am you know uh, I am here in Batu Pahat just for the weekend I am here simply gallivanting <laughs> um, yeah because you know, this this is sort of like you know one of those things that I enjoy doing yeah you know I, I like going to uh, minor towns small towns um, just pretty much to sightsee uh, you know do sightseeing and um, uh, you know sometimes you know small towns can be quite uh, you know uh, boring if you're looking for something that is particularly stimulating but I feel that small towns have their own charm so this is kind of like what I enjoy doing and now that um, we can you know we, we can sort of travel here in Malaysia um, this is what I did <laughs> uh, I'm here in a new town and uh, you know one of my tradition like a personal traditions would be you know whenever I go to a, to somewhere new and there happens to be like a uh, a bookstore there from which I can you know get some books I would definitely get some books and since I'm in here this is a totally new place for me I got some books <laughs> um, so yeah this is a book haul video uh, you would have known that because of the title and probably the thumbnail I'm not sure how the thumbnail will look like <laughs> but yeah um, I want to share with you some of the books that I bought in Batu Pahat. So I went to the um, I went to Popular Batu Pahat. Popular is a bookstore, and um, I got some books. I got some books, and I'm kind of excited about these books because these are kind of like the kinds of books that I would be very interested in. I mean, <laughs> I did exactly get like. Uh, books that are sort of out of my comfort zone this time so yeah um, if, if you're watching my channel chances are you probably have similar tastes uh, you know in reading like me or maybe not but if you have similar tastes in reading like me maybe these are the kinds of books that you would be interested in as well so yeah let's look at these books one by one um, starting with this one by Madeline Miller. So this is Circe. So Circe is kind of like the second novel, I think, after the Song of Achilles. And uh, I read the Song of Achilles this year. Um, I thought it was okay. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't breathtaking as well. Um, at least not to the extent that everyone else seems to be feeling you know, about that book. You know, I. <laughs> Uh, I just found it strange. I mean, maybe it's not that strange because Madeline Miller's writing is pretty good. Um, I just, I just found it strange that I didn't feel that much love towards the Song of Achilles. But um, you know, one thing I do feel is, uh, you know, is you know, something that shines through, uh, you know, the Song of Achilles was. Um, you know, I think that the author has such strong passion towards um, you know uh, the Greek myths, and uh, I think she has uh, great interest and uh, great desire to weave new stories from these myths. Um, you know, and I I thought that the Song of Achilles was was kind of like a um, 
a good and I would say I would even say a noble attempt to sort of like uh, weave a slightly different um, narrative in terms of the relationships between uh, Achilles and Patroclus. So I think with Circe, it will be something similar as well. So Circe is kind of like, um, it, I mean, Circe is the is a character in Greek mythology. I mean, obviously, I think everyone knows that, and better than I do. <laughs> but um, I I also feel that Circe has sort of kind of like this. Um, I would say uh, not exactly the shiniest brightest reputation in, in mythology and uh, I, I feel that this novel is sort of kind of like you know a, a retelling that attempts to uh, reclaim some power for this character of Circe and I'm really excited to see how that will turn out. Um, I am not familiar with the, uh, the original uh, Greek myth involving Cersei. So I'm not even going to bother talking about that or mentioning that here because I know that I will probably get it wrong. Um, so I think again with the Song of Achilles this would uh, sort of be like a, um, a fresh experience for me as well because I'm not familiar with the mythology um, at least not in great details. So uh, I'm quite excited to see how this one works for me um, yeah, uh, even though, uh, you know, the previous Madeline Miller book didn't, like, impress me so much, I definitely think that, you know, it, uh, the, the, you know, the, the passion is definitely there. And I think that's really important because, um, you know, I, you know, you can totally feel it when the author's passion or sincerity uh, shines through their writing even when you don't particularly like the end product but you know I think that's important I think that's really important so um, moving on to the next book that I have uh, this one is a translated fiction so this one is by Kikuko Tsumura it's called there's no such thing as an easy job I mean, that's a pretty downer title. Um, I mean, it's true. <laughs> um, too bad for me. I am looking for an easy job. <laughs> um, but anyway, this book was originally written in Japanese and it was translated into English by Polly Barton. Now, um, okay, roughly what this book is about. Uh, a woman walks into an employment agency and requests a job that requires no reading, no writing, and ideally very little thinking. Now, I personally, I don't mind jobs that don't require writing or even thinking. Um, I'm okay with some reading though, obviously. <laughs> anyway, back to this. She is sent to an office building where she is tasked with watching the hidden camera feed of an author suspected of storing contraband goods. But observing someone for hours on end isn't so easy. How will she stay awake? When can she take delivery of her favorite brand of tea? And perhaps more importantly, how did she find herself in this situation in the first place? Well, I think I don't have much to add to that. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how this, you know, what what will be the direction of this novel, um, what kind of approach it will take, uh, especially when it comes to jobs and job expectation. And I feel that for me personally, job expectation work expectation, career expectation is something that I sort of um, have been thinking a lot about these days, you know, because, I don't know, um, is it because I'm 28? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you guys think about that as well? <laughs> Do let me know, um, you know, just in case, you know, uh, it's just so that I... Uh, 
I, you know, I'm, I, I'm not even sure what is really going on with my head right now with all of these things. But I'm, but I'm fairly convinced that everyone thinks a little bit about that as well. You know, at least at some point in their lives, maybe. Anyway, um, yeah, something about this book that sort of interests me is, uh, you know, how this book is a story that sort of revolves around jobs. So yeah, um, kind of interested in that, to be honest. I feel like I made a, I am at a, uh, I don't know, uh, some kind of crossroad in my life, you know. Or maybe not, I think that sounds a little bit too dramatic. <laughs> next book okay next book is also something that I feel is fairly relatable uh, this one is by Elena Ferrante so um, originally written in Italian so this is called The Lying Life of Adults and like the Neapolitan novels um, this one was translated into English by Anne Goldstein and um, so what is this book about apparently it has something to do with I don't know body image um, let's see what it says at the back here Giovanna's pretty face has changed it's turning into the face of an ugly spiteful adolescent but is she seeing things as they really are where does she look to find her true reflection and a life she can claim as her own. Giovanna's search leads her to two kindred cities that fear and detest one another, the Naples of the Heights, which assumes a mask of refinement, and the Naples of the Depths, a place of excess and vulgarity. Adrift, she vacillates between these two cities, falling into one then climbing back to the other, but neither seems to offer her any answers. Okay. Um, yeah. Very personal stuff, I think. Uh, I think everyone feels that, you know, this way, right? And uh, there's this, this, this whole kind of like um, self-identity sort of a thing. Um, self-image, um, how to define yourself. I think it's especially true if you're, especially when you're much younger, I think. Um, maybe some of you are a bit more uh, older. Uh, you might think that it's it doesn't apply to you anymore as much. I'm not sure. Um, I, I can't tell. <laughs> it's not my place to tell. I'm still young, <laughs> uh, um, but um, yeah, uh, I like the previous works that I read by Elena Ferrante. You know the story of uh, Elena and also Lila. That one was amazing, and I love the ending. And so I am kind of interested to see how this one is like because something about the Neapolitan novels just felt very personal you know it felt very it, it you know it not very but it felt somewhat autobiographical even though we don't even know who the author is <laughs> but something about it feels very personal um, so I am curious if this would have that vibe as well um, so I'm definitely going to look for that when I get into this one. Um, those of you who have read this book, does it feel the same way? Or is it sort of different from, you know, My Brilliant Friend? Let me know what you think about this book. Um, but yeah, I am positively intrigued. And uh, the next novel that I got is a fairly new novel. I am more of a backlist person. But then sometimes, sometimes, Sometimes I, I I sort of cave to uh, you know the um, what's what's hot right now. So this is what I would do sometimes. So I got this new book. It's called 
Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jasi, and uh, I was actually really, you know, I was I was really interested in reading Homegoing, but somehow um, I have never really like uh, seen that book uh, sold in you know most of the second-hand bookstores that I uh, usually frequent. And uh, because that book was sort of published like a few years ago, it's not exactly like on the shelf, uh, you know, at, at you know uh, stores like Popular these days. Instead, uh, Popular would sell uh, newer books like this one, obviously. So I thought, hey, why not try this one? And uh, and so I got it. <laughs> um, I heard a lot of people liking this book, um, so you know, I guess it's just kind of like those those normal things, normal feelings of you know seeing someone liking something and it'd be like, oh, uh, you know, I I just kind of want to try to, yeah, and you know, I thought that the premise is kind of interesting. There is a little bit of you know the character dealing with sciencey stuff and also dealing with faith kind of like that. So, okay, let me just read the synopsis at the back. Gifty is a six-year PhD candidate in neuroscience at the Stanford University School of Medicine studying reward-seeking behavior in mice and the neural circuits of depression and addiction. Her brother, Nana, was a gifted high school athlete who died of a heroin overdose after an ankle injury left him hooked on OxyContin. Her suicidal mother is living in her bed. Gifty is determined to discover the scientific basis for the suffering she sees all around her, but even as she turns to the hard sciences to unlock the mystery of her family's loss, she finds herself hungering for her childhood faith and grappling with the evangelical church in which she was raised, whose promise of salvation remains as tantalizing as it is elusive. So I think um, this book would be about a character who is trying to find, who is trying to sort of um, reconcile their reality, or you know, find who who is probably trying to rationalize or justify the things that are happening in their you know in their reality you know with family members uh, uh, kill, you know film, you know committing suicide and also experiencing mental illness I think this character you know this character gift is just really really want to find an explanation and, or maybe you know find some comfort or anything either from science or from faith. I think that's a really straightforward but also very universal premise. Um, another thing that I am very much interested in this book is the fact that this character is, um, is, is turning to science, like one part of her is turning into science, turning to science. And um, I'm sort of interested to see how this book handles the science. Because often, very often in, uh, I would say, novels, even in literary novels, um, whenever the authors try to inject some sciences into their stuff, often it comes across as deliberate, you know, deliberately trying to sound sciency. But the readers who are familiar with the science that is being included in the novels what sort of you know realizes that you know the the science included in the novel feels very rudimentary or even sometimes inaccurate which i personally feel is you know um i come from a chemistry background and so it always irks me to see inaccurate uh chemistry terms being included into novels because, um, okay, let's say you don't understand chemistry, right? You don't have the background. Maybe you will just take it in um, and, you know, 
maybe it would add even onto the tone or you know the the, the vibe of the novel you know adds onto the um, scientific feel to it but someone who knows what the sign scientific terms really means they would often feel deceived you know they would often feel like this author is not really putting much effort into understanding the signs that they're putting into the novels and uh, you know we would also tend to feel like you know uh, yes we feel deceived but we sort of feel somewhat sorry for those of uh, those other readers who may not understand the sciences who are being openly lied to <laughs> and um, me personally I just want to make sure that the sciences included are accurate and not just for the sake of sounding sciency and I hope I hope that if uh, you know Ya Jasi includes the you know the science of uh, you know neuroscience neurobiology into this book now I may not understand everything about neurobiology but sometimes you can sort of suss out some things that just feels off you know when it comes to scientific flavored writing I hope that the author does it well and not just for the sake of being sciencey yeah so yeah really interested to see how that will turn out in this novel and uh, well those are all the novels that I bought I did get one non-fiction and I got this one partly because I was interested but also because it was cheap this is a big ass no you know big ass book <laughs> this is simone de beauvoir the second sex and it's really thick honestly you know whenever i see books that are really thick but book but i'm really interested in i feel like a great conflict you know i feel like there's a great conflict brewing inside me um you know like when will i even find time to read this book you know, and how will you, how will I even have the motivation and drive and the stamina to read such big book? But you know, I don't know. Maybe something will happen in the future. Maybe there will be a miracle. Maybe a different me will come out in 2022. I don't know. Maybe a thinner me. Maybe. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, this is a nonfiction. And uh, honestly, uh, I can't say, I can't articulate very well what exactly this book entails because I think that it has a lot of ideas in it. Um, but let's just say it's, it's, it's a feminist nonfiction. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so lousy with book holes. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think the the writing in the back of this book really explains it. It it only says that it's a twentieth century classic and landmark in the history of feminism. Um, I read some excerpts, but I mean, it's a long ass book. <laughs> so um, it will take me some time to digest it. And uh, yeah, if you have read this book, don't tell me what this book is about. I did not even research what this book was about, but I'm intrigued. Um, yeah, I'm very much intrigued by it, and I want to just surprise myself. So um, yeah, with this, I'm gonna end this video, and uh, I'll see you again in a different one. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching, and uh, bye bye. <laughs>